What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning back into my YouTube channel. As you can see, we're back in my garage this week and I wanna talk about the E92. I got a bunch of parts on order, so there's not that much work going on in the garage this week, but over the past week or so, I've been able to get the driver's seat in and the pedals in the car, and I wanted to talk a little bit about driver position in a drift car. So one of the major problems I had in my E36 was that it was uncomfortable. It wasn't so bad if I could just get in the car, then go do my thing and then get out of the car, but sitting on grid, my legs would get tired, my arms would get tired. I had a lot of things just kind of out of whack. And also I had things like my pedals traveled too far and uh, my steering wheel was too far up whereas I was positioned too far down. So today I just wanna to talk about how I'm setting the driver position up in the E4, uh, I'm sorry, E92 and uh, kind of tell you guys why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. So let's get right into it. So. I got the seat here. It's not really all the way bolted in, but it's pretty close to where it's gonna sit. I got the pedals down there. And if you can see by where the seat sits in the door, it is really low and really far back. You can see, I don't think we could get this seat any lower. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the seat. So in a drift car, you, as far as I know, you want the seat as far back as possible to maximize your weight distribution because you as a person are like 200 pounds. Well, maybe you're a little lighter, I'm a little heavier. But 200 pounds is a lot of weight to be able to move around just a few inches in the, in the interior of the car because we wanna maximize weight distribution. We really want like a 50-50 or 49-50 type weight distribution. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the seating position, the seat itself. Now in Formula Drift, you're only allowed to use 50 pounds worth of ballast weight. That's dumb weight not doing anything. So if you remember in the back of the E92, I'm actually running two batteries, and that's just to increase the weight in the back over the axle. When it comes to the driver position, we want that weight as far back as possible to offset the weight of the engine in front of the strut towers. So we're shooting for a nice 50-50 or 49-51, maybe even 48-52 weight distribution. And one of the ways we're gonna achieve that is by moving you about 200 pounds, maybe a little less, I'm a little more actually, as far back in the cockpit as possible. We also want to move the weight of you as a person toward the middle of the car as much as possible. A lot of actual BMWs are set up like this stock, so the driver's seat and the passenger seat are shifted very, very close to the center console. So first things first, sorry the lighting's not so great in here guys, but I think you can see all right. First things first, you can see how far in I have the seat. I mean the seat's really far in, probably about five inches, and then on this side, uh, it's tough to see, there's nothing though. Basically no room on that side, maybe half an inch, but I have the seat shifted all the way, as close as I can this way. And if you look, it's actually aligned with where the gauge cluster hump is. So this is where the factory seat was, it was this far into the center of the car. Another thing you might notice is, it's all the way back, I have it as far back as possible, in fact, Right now, the seat's loose right now, but it's actually touching my diagonal bar right here. So when we tighten this up, it'll be about a half an inch off that diagonal bar. But we wanted to move our weight all the way back as far as possible to offset the weight of the motor. So another thing you'll notice is actually it's pretty straight up and down. So actually this is a little bit kind of tilted further back than it was in my E36, but my E36 was super uncomfortable because of it. So I had to tilt it a little bit, and but it's still pretty straight up and down. All right guys, so you guys look a little crooked, honestly. There you go. All right guys, so sitting in the seat. Now you can see, like I said, I'm as far back as possible. I'm as far to the center of the car as possible. And for me, this is over 200 pounds further back in the car. When we talk about weight distribution, it's not enough to just think you can put a ton of weight way behind the rear axle to offset the weight of the engine. You can achieve a 50-50 weight distribution or whatever weight distribution you want doing that, but it's adding what's called polar weight. Polar weight increases your moment of inertia, which makes the car rotate extremely slowly in comparison to not having polar weight. So when we look in my trunk, 
you'll notice that I have basically the heaviest things above the axle or very close to the axle and the things get lighter as they go. That's because I'm trying to reduce polar weight back there. I'm doing the same here. The more weight that we can shift back between the two axles, the better it is for our weight distribution. Also, the better it is for our polar weight because we're not really adding or subtracting any polar weight. We're moving it between the axles. This seat is actually a little bit too small for my shoulders. I have all of the padding out of the bottoms of the seat, but you can see my shoulders actually sit a little bit outside. I may get a wider one just for that. It does fit my hips nicely, but my shoulders are a little too broad for this seat. And if I'm driving it for a very long amount of time, actually I will get very sore right here. I'll get kind of uh, chafing marks or, or something like that. So really I should be like scrunched up like this. My back is against the back of the seat, plenty of room for my helmet and my shoulders are below the head restraints, but I'm just a little bit too tall in the torso area and too broad in the shoulder area to really fit in this seat like I'm supposed to. But I really love the look of this seat. The last thing I want to talk about about this seat is how close to the floor I am. I have tons and tons of room for a helmet and I am basically on the floor. If you remember in the first videos we did, we cut all the floor mounts out and I actually made bars to mount the seat on that uh, are basically maybe just a quarter inch off the floor. So we are about as low as possible. I have the side mounts bolted directly to those bars. So now I wanna talk about the pedal setup. So as you can see, I have floor mounted pedals, which Thank God they fit because I made this off of the dimensions on Willwood's site and fit perfectly. Very lucky. It usually never happens. But as you can see, I'm using floor mounted pedals. I have my clutch, my brake, my gas. Nothing's hooked up, so they're all kind of sitting pretty wonky. But if I put my feet where I think they should sit, maybe here and here, you can see that the gas pedal basically aligned with my legs straight out. I want to do that because I'm on throttle more then I'm on the gas or on the clutch. So when I set this up, I wanted the throttle pedal to be basically straight out and that's to keep my leg from fatiguing. Where the pedals are set right now, there's a slight bend in my leg and I would be using mostly just my ankle to push the gas pedal so I wouldn't be moving my whole leg like this. That was a big problem in the E36. I was moving my whole legs and actually my feet were kind of moving on the pedal and wearing all the grip tape, grip tape out on the pedal while I was driving. If you look at the clutch pedal, there's no grip tape on it and that's for the same reason. So putting the gas pedal right here in front makes it very easy to move my left foot for left foot braking and also to push the clutch in. If it came back, if it was a master cylinder, if anything was hooked up, it would come back. This one's got a spring in it, so actually it does come back. So it's very easy, very easy, very easy to move my foot around to not fatigue my legs. And you'd be surprised at how much that makes a difference because I would get lazy earlier in the day from driving my E36 than I ever did when I had a stock pedal set up. So I'm hoping to get rid of that kind of laziness or fatigue later in the day by setting my driver position up correctly. In the E36, I had a ton of travel on my gas pedal. So there was like a ton of travel like this and I was like moving my entire leg. So I was like, you know, really trying to modulate it like that. And I thought that would be a good thing because I had plenty of, you know, different positions I could modulate the throttle plate. But in reality, I'm always on throttle as much as possible or almost completely off of it waiting for the engine to wind down or something like that. And one of the things I'm going to do in this car is actually I'm going to shorten this pedal travel up. So the pedal will travel less than actually the throttle plate opening and that will be able to make me open the throttle plate faster. So far, we've moved our driver position back and inward to better our weight distribution. And we've talked about fatiguing legs so getting lazy later in the day or your legs just getting sore or things like that and how to fix that next thing i'm going to talk about is fatiguing your arms so many people like their steering wheel basically in their lap like this you know very very close to their lap they take it off they get in they get out you know whatever but i'm not really like that i like it a little bit higher and the reason i like it higher is um basically actually because i read it about what road racers do and what road racers do is they aim the steering column, the center of the steering wheel, directly at their neck. So a little bit higher than just in your lap, like a lot of drifters like. But the reason they do that is because when you turn for a long, long time, you know, you can really fatigue your arms. So if you're doing some endurance racing or something like that, 
you're obviously gonna get really fatigued. And down here, you're only using kind of like this portion of your arm, these muscles. When your steering wheel's up here, you're using all your shoulder, your bicep, your tricep, you're using all those muscles too, so you don't fatigue as fast. So I generally have my steering wheel set a little bit higher than most drifters like. But it works for me. My arm's actually all season besides the chafing issue on the seat. Never got sore or lazy from that. Now talking about the steering wheel position, the steering wheel position will also dictate the e-brake position, for me at least. Some people like their e-brake like over here and they reach way out for it. I like it right between the steering wheel and the shifter. So as long as I can grab it and not hit the steering wheel and also shift into first and not hit the e-brake, that's exactly where I like it because when you pull on the e-brake, you pull it straight back. You don't have to pull it into you. It's much more natural for me to pull it back and also it's faster to go from the steering wheel to the e-brake to the shifter if it's right between them. So I like to set it up right between them like that. Now sitting in here, you see there's no transmission yet. I don't have any of these parts actually mocked up besides the pedal set in the seat. Uh, because I don't have a steering column in, no transmission, the e-brake's not even bolted down. And that's because I've ordered a GSR dog box. I'm super excited about it. But I have to wait till that comes in because when that comes in, I can put the engine in. The engine on the driver's side, the headers, will kind of dictate where the steering column will go. Not so much where the wheel will go, side to side, up, down, around, but it will dictate where the steering column itself goes through the firewall because of the header clearance. So I need to wait until the engine is in to be able to put the steering column in. When the steering column is in, I can dictate where the steering wheel will be, which will dictate where the handbrake will be in relation to where the shifter is. So the shifter is probably gonna kind of ruin that equation a little bit because I don't think I can get a, a set back as far back as I want it. I think it's gonna be a little bit further forward than the e-brake, somewhere around here, even if I get a bent handle for it. But I need to put the engine trans in so I can put the steering column in so I can set up the driver position correctly. I never really made this effort when I did the E36. When I did the E36, I used a CD009 transmission and that allowed me to push everything as far back as I could uh, because the shifter is so far back in those, I didn't relocate it forward. So I actually used the stock shifter in my CD009 and I pushed everything back to accommodate where the shifter was. That's actually the whole reason I already have a pedal box. I never really set it up to be ergonomic. I just set it up so that it would work. But it worked okay, just a little tiring by the end of the day. And you could see it in my runs, it got very boring, very lazy. I was kind of going downhill as the day went on. So in this car, I want to be much more comfortable. The other thing that would happen in the E36, thinking about it, is that when there was something broken on the car and my mechanics were fixing it, I didn't like to stay in the car. So I wanted to get out because I wasn't comfortable. And that's bad. <laughs> Really, you want to be able to stay in the car, the mechanics take care of it, you're already in the car, you can get back to the line. But uh, I always wanted to get out. My mechanic is perfectly capable of fixing anything that happened to the car. But I just wanted to get out. I was uncomfortable, I was sore, I wanted to get out and stretch my legs. Speaking of being uncomfortable and sore, so you'll, you'll notice there's no dead pedal, actually there's no floor. Um, plate here for my feet to rest on. There's no footrest. There will be an aluminum footrest that I'll make for here just to position my foot a little bit higher off the floor to make my ankle pivot along with the pivot in the gas pedal or any of the other pedals. But I won't be putting a dead pedal in. So a lot of people put a dead pedal in to rest their foot like this. I actually prefer to stretch my leg out like this when I'm just sitting in line. I wish I could stretch this one out the same, but I can't really get it over there. So this one fatigues much faster than this one because I'm able to do this. I won't be putting a dead pedal in, but there will be a kind of foot rest here for my feet to raise them up a little. So guys, thanks for watching. This is kind of a different uh, video than we normally do. I kind of spilled the beans on the dog box, but I can't wait for it to come in. I'm so excited to have a actual straight cut gear transmission. and. Uh, when I actually bolt everything down, I'll show you exactly how I bolted the seat in to get it this low and this far back, exactly how I did the pedal set, and how I'm going to do the top of the transmission tunnel and make a cover for it. So, and how about the e-brake actually. So stay tuned for that, 
And if you found this video helpful or if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment down below. I am certainly not an expert on these types of videos. I don't do so much talking to the camera usually. But if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it or you have something to say, leave a comment down below. Maybe learn me something, something I didn't know. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good Thanksgiving. I'll see you next week.